Hello, and welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journal Cast on Landmark Papers and Surgery. My name is Caitlin Ritter, a Critical Care Fellow at Denver Health Medical Center, and I will be reviewing the article, Topical Mitomycin C Application is Effective in the Management of Localized Caustic Esophageal Structures, published in the Journal of Pediatric Surgery. Each year, there are over 2 million toxic exposures in humans in the United States. Half of all these ingestions occur in children less than 5 years of age, with household cleaning products, including bleach, train cleaners, and laundry detergents, representing the most commonly ingested products. Esophageal strictures are a late complication of caustic ingestion, presenting on average 2 months after initial injury. Stricture rates range between 3 to 57 percent depending on the depth of caustic injury. Traditional management of these lesions was with esophageal dilation and often required repeat procedures with a high recurrence rate. Various interventions have been evaluated to help improve these outcomes, with case series data supporting the use of topical mitomycin C on caustic strictures. Such series have had promising results, but well-studied randomized control data was lacking. This study sought to evaluate this therapeutic modality and provide more definitive data evaluating the efficacy of topical mitomycin C on treating caustic esophageal strictures in pediatric populations. To evaluate this question, the authors included children who sustained a caustic ingestion injury. Caustic stricture was confirmed by barium swallow, and symptoms were monitored with the validated dysphagia scoring system. A screening upper endoscopy and initial dilation was performed to assess the length of strictures. Patients with strictures longer than 3 cm or multiple strictures were excluded from the study. Other exclusion criteria included patients with prior esophageal surgery, esophageal perforation, or allergy to mitomycin C. Patients meeting criteria were then randomized to one of two arms. The first arm applied topical mitomycin C to the stricture at the time of the second and all subsequent dilations. The second arm applied a placebo solution in place of the mitomycin for the duration of the study. Patients received dilations at regular intervals until resolution of dysphagia. The study's primary outcome was to quantify the number of dilation sessions necessary for resolution of dysphagia within the first six months of treatment. The secondary outcome was to evaluate the percentage of patients with complete resolution of dysphagia within six months. A total of 40 patients, 20 in each arm, were enrolled in this randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled trial. Baseline characteristics, including age, gender, and type of corrosive injury, were statistically similar between the two groups. Stricture length and initial dysphagia score were also similar. Results of this study demonstrated a statistically significant decrease in the number of dilations performed within six months for the mitomycin C arm as compared to the placebo arm with the mitomycin C group requiring an average of 3.85 dilations versus 6.9 dilations in the placebo arm. Similarly, the mitomycin arm also had a higher percentage of patients with resolution of their dysphagia symptoms, 80% versus 35% in the placebo arm. Of the patient who had resolution in both the mitomycin C and placebo groups, none experienced recurrence of symptoms over a 24 to 51 month follow-up. This resolution was confirmed by the validated dysphagia score, endoscopic evaluation for residual stricture, and upper GI and barium radiograph, all demonstrating stricture resolution. Strengths of this study included stringent methodology. Previous case series have reported on the success of mitomycin Z in management of esophageal strictures, but this is the first study of its kind to perform a randomized, blinded, placebo-controlled evaluation of this therapy. Additionally, the use of the validated dysphagia scoring system and radiographic and endoscopic confirmation of stricture resolution supports the validity of their outcome measures. Some limitations of this study include its generalizability. The authors specifically looked at pediatric patients only and excluded patients with multiple strictures and strictures longer than 3 centimeters. The applicability of mitomycin C as a therapeutic intervention in these populations remains unclear. Additionally, the authors noted the lack of data regarding optimal dosing concentrations of mitomycin C. Ranges from 0.5 to 1 mg per milliliter have been described, and in this study, the authors utilized a dose of 0.4 mg per milliliter, citing the concern of minimizing potential side effects of the mitomycin C 
which include tissue necrosis, bone marrow suppression, and the risk of secondary malignancy. Finally, the authors reported on the long-term outcomes of both patients who did and did not achieve dysphagia resolution with some variability. Post-intervention timeframes ranged from 24 to 51 months and were focused primarily on symptom reoccurrence. Future directions might explore the benefit of long-term follow-up of both symptoms and endoscopic appearance of these esophageal lesions. In conclusion, topical mitomycin C applied in conjunction with esophageal dilation results in an increased resolution of symptoms and decreased number of required dilations in pediatric patients with short-length caustic esophageal strictures. I'm Caitlin Ritter, a critical care fellow at Denver Health Medical Center. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email or on Twitter at at Caitlin Ritter MD. Don't forget to review this content with the current This Week in Score module on esophageal caustic ingestions. And thanks for listening.